What's today? June. June 9th, 2024. We're doing pretty good so far. As you can see, this is my board right here. Uh, we'll sync these later and all that stuff. But we are recording right now. This is our uh, podcast. I think this is 88 or so. And we're getting all techie now. Before it was just just audio recording. And then once I got these cameras, I started with one camera. And now I have two going at the same time. We'll see how well it works. You know, I'm going to be syncing these and doing all that stuff and playing around with that. So it's going to actually take me a little bit longer to get the YouTube, not the YouTube, but the uh, the uh, video podcast up. This one will probably be up in later on today, this Sunday. So I do have some coffee. So all is well on my end. Um. It's early in the morning, seven o'clock, a little over seven o'clock on Sunday, doing relatively well. Um, life is good. No complaints. Um, yeah. Okay. Just making sure everything is recording. It's kind of interesting Much once you have things set up. And I did this yesterday. also did a double recording and it was cool, but I think next time. When I do some of my videos again, I'll just probably just do one just to play around with it and see how it works and everything. Right. But I was starting to get frustrated when I started to do this stuff, because the reason why is because this stuff isn't really as fun, you know, so to speak. Let me see what we're working with. OK, 28. My computer, my laptop is down a little bit. But I told myself yesterday, it's like, OK, OK, OK. This is part of the journey. You know, like setting things up, getting things ready. That's part of the journey, you know, and that's one of the things that I'm really trying to understand and get to to the point to where it's like, oh, OK. There's no real destination. Yeah, there is a destination, but there's no real destination. Really, what we're trying to do is just trying to get better in our craft, trying to get better in what we're trying to do and have fun with this. So that's more so what we're trying to do, at least right now. And we'll see where things go and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and taste the coffee. I just brewed it just now. This is the Colombian coffee. Don't know. It's less acidic. It is a light roast. For some reason, I do taste a little bit of roasty notes on it. We're going to let it cool down. There's, I know there's a lot of people out there that love drinking their coffee like piping, piping hot. I can't really do that. Um, the reason why is because it's too hot. <laughs> I like coffee to be... Uh, a little less than, let's say, about five, ten minutes off a of brew, because I think that works out pretty well. And believe it or not, this is one of the coffees that, of course, it's a Colombian I've been talking about for the longest. It has a natural acidity for tasting. It has some red fruit, but I think it leans towards more so the uh, grapefruity type of taste and not in a pleasant way. And this one was roasted lighter. And this is actually the first time in a very long time that I roasted, that I brewed this one at 1 to 18 ratio. And I don't do that a lot. I really don't do 1 to 18. 1 to 18 to me is too weak. I usually do 1 to 15. And then whenever I make coffee for myself and my wife, it's usually 1 to 10 or 1 to 12. And I'm doing it this way to push myself to get out of my comfort zone. This one was on the Hario V60 switch. Uh, I did do a video today. It should go live today. The Hario V60 switch. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Uh, I was talking to myself a little bit yesterday in regards to all of this. 
And a cool thing about it is that I was doing something. I was getting really frustrated because I never did my image. I needed an image, but we'll see if I get to it. About my last video that kind of bombed. And I was really depressed about it. Really, yeah, I get depressed, especially dealing with YouTube. Is uh, It didn't do as well. Not as many views, not much people watched it. I think right now, when I checked it last night, we're like 18. And yeah, so it didn't really go anywhere, which is interesting. So we'll see where it goes from there. And I do have a kind of game plan of things that I want to do, like to do in the way that I will tailor the uh, the videos moving forward. You know, I'm not really going to say it right now because it's easier for me to just do it. And then if I get feedback, we'll probably tweak and go from there. But there are some things that I do want to do in order to really get into the minds and to really help people give people value. But like I said, it's not the end of the world just because i know for sure is that one thing that happened or certain things that happened is that i don't really ask for like a like and subscribe i really don't do that just because i'm still trying to find my voice i'm trying to see how i can be helpful to people and as i'm doing that i just want to be helpful you know, I know eventually people will probably come and probably buy the coffee from time to time. Right. But it's not even so much. Well, this part of the business isn't so much about that. It's going to be a part of it, but it's in a different way, meaning that I really, truly, really want to help people along their journey, you know. And the way I go about that is going to be extremely important in the approach and the way I go and I do it, right? So that's going to be the telling thing. And as you do things and understand them even more so, you get to the point to where you're finding your lane, you're finding your voice, you're finding the way that you like to do things. And I think that's going to be extremely important as we go down this journey together, because there's going to be a lot of things that I learn along this journey but the cool thing is that even though it didn't get as many views i think i was able to two people subscribed two or three something like that i think it was two two people subscribed and i got a thumbs up <laughs> so you always have to look at the bright side of things and and the cool thing about it truly really is that the podcast or the video was about, to an extent, about roasting, right? And not, don't think a lot of people cared about that, you know? And that's a good thing because, you know, you always gauge who's actually watching, viewing your stuff. Is it roasters? Do they want to kind of get an idea of what you're trying to do? In order to kind of copy or or take things from in order so they can do it also for themselves and it gets to the point too where you're like okay is this the right way to do it does this make sense and all that but the beauty of this the beauty of the situation is that that video doing what it is what it has done has let me realize is that my audience, my audience isn't roasters. My audience is coffee drinkers who drink coffee each and every day, right? And that's what I want my audience to be. You know, demographic wise, splits here and there and all that good stuff. I will understand that more as we keep doing these, understand everybody. But I just want to be a part of the journey. I just want to be helpful. I want to be not just another voice in the YouTube coffee lane. I want to be extremely helpful. Give people ideas and tips and tricks and then come at from it from my angle. And that's the biggest thing. And I think that's the beauty of 
starting this channel, reviving this channel, and really getting to the point to where I'm finding my voice, I'm finding my way, just like as I'm doing with these podcasts. I'm extremely comfortable behind this mic or in front of this mic, as you can see right now. Because it took time, right? It took time to develop that sense of comfort, that sense of care, that sense of continuous reps in the bank, you know? And as I do that, I know that everything is going to get better. I've noticed also that my speaking to people in public is a lot better. I'm more open, you know? I Like I said before, many podcasts ago, I'm a misanthrope, as they will say. And I don't truly really care for people. Humanity is where I'm at. We can talk more about that as we get delve into it, if you want to understand me even more. But I'm a loner. I like to do things on my own. And as I do things and understand people and practice and do these videos, those are so many different things that I learn along the way as I'm getting better understanding what I'm trying to do, right? So those are like the soft or things that just happen because I'm doing YouTube, I'm doing podcasting, I'm doing all these things, these public speaking type of things, pushing myself outside of my boundaries to the point to where it's like, oh, that guy's interesting. I think I'm always interesting, to tell you the truth, but but now I'm, I'm able to really express myself to others and then they can see where I'm coming from with a lot of this stuff. So yeah, so that's me rambling about myself. Let's drink this coffee. It's less fruit float forward. It's still there. I would say it's kind of sweet. But here's the thing about this coffee. And this is the thing that we're going to get to eventually. And I need to figure out how I'm going to incorporate this. Not so much on the roast. The one that kind of bombed. It's like, how is this helpful to you? That's where I'm really getting back to. <clears throat> we'll talk about it more. But I don't like to rush what ideas. I like to let it sit a little bit, so to speak. And get to the point to where I am... Uh, it has to be fun and valuable to you, right? But I'm really trying to understand the things that I'm, I like to do with coffee and how it can actually be helpful. Th that's the thing about all this. This is very challenging. This stuff of thinking of ideas, thinking of concepts, going about it, seeing if it works or if it doesn't work, and going from there, right? That's kind of like where I'm at with a lot of this stuff. And as I do that and get better and understand even more so, it's going to be a lot more fun, right? It's going to be in a place to where it does make sense to me. It's going to make sense to you eventually. And once I figure out the game plan of orchestrating or configuring or doing whatever I need to in order to make these videos helpful to you that's the real fun in this right that's the real challenge in what i'm really trying to do here so okay i think i just said that but i just kind of said it again so let's taste this coffee one more time and we'll go from there what and we're going to let it cool right because again to me it tastes better when it cools <sighs> I wouldn't say it's necessarily sweeter. It's less harsh with the acidic taste. That's what I would say. And it's interesting because like before the grapefruity part will like be up front, 
and then it will continue to linger. But no, but now I get more like a red fruit taste in the beginning. And then on the tail end, aftertaste of the coffee, I get that grapefruity type of taste, which is interesting. And then here's the thing about this one. One is the 118, which I normally don't do. So it's harder for me to really taste the coffee because I like it a little bit stronger. So again, that's me tasting the coffee and enjoying it in a way to where I'm not necessarily used to right now. But it challenges me to get me out of my comfort zone, right? To put a little bit more water in a cup. Okay. And then... I didn't want to try extreme to where I do go coarser, but with more coffee. Or if I go coarser, I'm going to do like a 1 to 10 ratio or something like that because I have to in order to extract it right. So there's so many different things and different ways that we can enjoy this coffee. And then I did it on a Hario V60 Switch. That video, like I said, should be out today. Probably in an hour or so. The time doesn't matter because... I will produce this. This will get produced later. And then you probably won't even listen to this at all. Because <laughs> these are actually a lot longer compared to the other videos and all that stuff, right? So, so yeah. So, 1 to 18 ratio on the Harvey B60 switch. Let it bloom. Hold the bloom for 30 to 40, for 30 to 40 seconds. And then... Uh, um, I let it draw down and then this is the kicker on this coffee in particular is that I did a constant pour and I used another Hario V60 kettle it's about, it's about 500 milliliters 500 grams of, of what it can hold but I used that poured the water in there the water was like at 199 200 degrees so it came down i'm sure about five to six even probably 10 degrees so at least 190 degrees fahrenheit so that's relatively low and then poured it slowly into the v60 and let it come all the way down so i didn't do a couple of pulses i just did one single pour because what i'm thinking i'm noticing at least right now trying different coffees and all that is that the coffees are tending to be sweeter compared to what I'm used to doing two to three pours. And one thing I'm noticing, it could be, I wouldn't say so much of an agitation that actually I thought it was going to be an agitation because you pour and you pour. But this one actually probably agitates it about the... It, I think it's all relatively the same. I think something about the drawdown and then once it's almost down and doing it again, it does something to the acidity. I really don't know what it does. Some scientists can come on here and probably give me an understanding of what's going on. But I'm trying the one single pour for a while to see if I can get more sweetness out of the cup of coffee as I brew it. So, okay, so yeah, so what else are we going to talk about today? Like I said, YouTube, business-wise, business-wise is fine. I check my patent to see every, how that's going, and I still have about seven, eight more. No, two to three more months. I'm not too worried about that. Checked Amazon, still the same thing, and I could reach out to my representative my associate to help me out more with that because I've did everything that she told me to do. But I'm not going to right now just because there's so many things that are still like fresh and new to me, like this whole recording and getting better that it still needs to be ironed out a little bit more editing, you know, understanding the ins and outs of things that I'm trying to do create more of a streamline of all the things that I'm doing with the blogging, with the podcasting, with YouTube, and then whatever else I will start to introduce to my, to my, uh, to my stuff. And once I get 
to the next step that's going to be the next step or whatever else is going to be next right so i do need to get to the point to where once i feel really comfortable because now for instance i got i paid for the studio version of davinci resolve and there's a lot more things learning curves and all that even this multi-cam thing so i don't want to keep adding more things to my plate and not being able to really stay with it. That's what happened a couple of months ago when I got these cameras, I did other stuff, da 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 da. So that's where I'm not really pushing uh, Amazon too much because I do want to get in a place where it's comfortable, where I'm at a good place and then we go from there, right? And then there's, you're always gonna learn how to edit better, do things better and understand people better. And then, so yeah, so that's kind of like where I'm at with that right now. But what else are we gonna talk about right now? I did wanna talk about something. I don't want this to be too, too heavily long. But the thing that I do wanna talk about is farmer's markets. I don't think I went into detail about farmer's markets. I probably did in a post before, but it's interesting. Um, before I talk about that, I'll bring this up to kind of relate to what I'm trying to say is that I was one of my favorite podcasts I listen to is called Mind Pump. It's a fitness podcast. It's like three guys and their friends and all that. And the way that they started their business is that they just started talking podcasts, giving people free advice. Kind of like what I'm doing right now, which many people have done, you know. And one of the questions that they had, they did like a 2000 episode of what they did in the past and all that good stuff, right? But of giving people tips and tricks of all this stuff. And they talk about everything and anything. And that's the reason why I got this idea. And also Bill Burr, the way he approaches his podcast, I really do like. It's not so much of a, production type of thing or podcasty as people would think a podcast podcast is whatever you make of it but you know just like with style and videos and all that stuff i'm getting off tangent and all that good stuff right so let me get back on topic so one of the questions that they did get when they did um go about doing their stuff is that people always ask they're like okay how do you talk about anything you you just repeat things right and they kind of laugh and chuckle it's like yeah you're right we do that's what we do because it's a human body it's the same type of exercises but when people come and view your stuff at the time that they do it you may say something a little different to the point to where they're like oh I get it. That makes sense. Okay. That's pretty cool. Huh. I never thought about it that way. And they probably said it just a little bit different than what they are customarily doing, right? So there's like nothing really new under the sun. You probably say it differently. You're probably in a different place in your life. You know, I've done that many times to where I read, like, for instance, The Alchemist many years when I did read it. <laughs> Is that at that time and season of your life, you are doing something or understanding something the way you do. So when I read The Alchemist when I was in my late 20s, it was prime time. The way that that book to me that I received it gave me a sense of like, you know, it's interesting. We'll probably have another topic about this, but it's about, uh, it's about, uh, coming of age. And I was still figuring things out, understanding the things I'm doing and all that good stuff. And it's like, bam. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. And then years later, with kids, wife, work stuff, slowly finding coffee, truly, really, right? 
I read that book and it's different. It doesn't do it the same way as it did to me before. So you reach things and you do things and you give information to people and the way you deliver it, you're in a different place too. So you're growing and the way you talk or communicate to people is going to be totally different than when you go about this, right? In a way to where it does make sense to people. So that's my little spiel about, I probably did the farmer's market talk before, but we're going to talk about it again because I may think about it differently now. And I thought that it would be a good topic, you know? So you see how I'm doing with juice. We're doing pretty good with juice. Come on, I'm going to open up. There we go. So this is probably going to be a 40 minute one. So sorry about that. I said, I tell people all the time, I could talk to myself. <clears throat> so me talking to other people and all that stuff is, is no problem. Like the friend yesterday, which I'm going to have a talk with him. And it's going to be interesting is that um, he said does he doesn't have a passion, but he's passionate about effectiveness, something like that. And we're going to go into the rabbit hole of what that really means of what he means by that. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. But like I said, OK, Farmer's Market. I did Farmer's Market 2018. I think the same year my dad passed. Yeah, we did. Farmer's Market started that in March. We saw Farmer's Market probably about five, six minute walk away from the house, not too far away. And it was interesting. Uh, and this is where I was trying to figure out other things to do with coffee, trying to grow the, grow the brand. And at the time, especially 2018, Farmer's Markets were everywhere. But this one was literally down the street. And we went to the grand opening. It was a big hit, of course, as they are. And we thought about it. We're like, wait, we'll be fools not to do something about it. They didn't have no coffee purveyors. I don't even think they had tea. And uh, we're like, okay, there's nothing. There's nothing that we will lose if we don't do this, right? So let's go ahead and do this. So we did that. We went ahead and uh, put in our application. Then they told us all the things that we needed. So we needed insurance. We needed to get like a tent, a nice tent. So I think I spent like $200 for my tent. I think I gave it to a friend afterwards. He still uses it. He uh, he likes it. Of course, it's a nice tent. <laughs> um, and then um, start thinking about recipes and bags and how we're going to present start looking at different things of what people were doing and all that stuff so we really went into it i think we are probably close to a thousand dollars in a hole with insurance with other stuff and blah 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 you know and i think this is where i think we started and then i got injured because yeah i got injured that day that time too because i try to pick up my roaster and all that stuff and and it really didn't work out because I injured myself and I was down for a couple of months, but I still had to do the farmer's market, roast the coffee and all that stuff. Right. So the coffee thing was cool. It was it was new. It was something it gave us some type of hope. It gave us a reason why we knew that we were doing what we're doing. Uh, we talked to other people in the same boat doing the same thing. Right. And it was cool. It was interesting. It was it was. It was new. It was something that we knew that we wanted to do. So then we started getting more approaches from different people. We started doing other farmers markets. And we delved into that world. And I think I even told one dude about the two. And I think he eventually started doing it. Then he stopped. Whatever. That's his situation. So this is my situation. So it got to the point to where, you know, Every week was a grind. And I think at, at the time, we were doing it every other week. And there's farmer's markets that are still going on now that are like every week. Just bizarre. Every week. And the thing that people don't tell you behind the scenes of a farmer's market is that 
it's not easy stuff. It's really not. It's you may see a farmer's market vendor there, um, just there for those hours. But of course, people kind of understand that you're just not just popping up. But you have to get there a couple of hours before. You set everything up. You talk to some vendors, talk to the organizers and all that stuff. And then you're just kind of waiting for people to come through. And depending on where you're at in the uh, farmer's market uh, saga or layout or whatever, you know, that's where you're at. And I think at the time we needed power because we had uh, coffee grinders and then we had kettles to also make the coffees. I think eventually we started just having the buns to where we just made the coffee earlier and then we just bring those inside the set, right? So it was a lot of stuff. It was a lot of it was a lot of prep. And then you had to like guesstimate how many bags of coffee that you wanted to bring. And then they had their own rules of like what you can do, what you can do. If you sold out of your product, then you can't leave. So you have to stay there and smile when you're telling people to that you don't have any product, you probably give out cards and all that stuff. You don't have any more samples to give out, but whatever. It they had their own rules and they wanted us to start to like buy like a frappuccino machine and more drink machines and we had to go beyond just hot coffee and and having condiments for people to use and dress their coffees and all that and then i think eventually we started doing cold brew cold brew did really well which i'm not too big of a fan of cold brew I'll tell you the truth but it's all good people like what they like um so yeah so that was the thing with that and it was a job it was after a while it started to be, become not new it wasn't exciting. And then you really start to see it for what it was. You really understood more so of what you're trying to do and understand, right? And then the situation happened to the point to where, you know, it's like this. Here's a, here's a good example. Let's say you're on Instagram and you're posting, you're promoting your business and all that stuff, right? Your goal is really not to stay on Instagram. Your goal is to get people to enjoy your stuff on Instagram, but then to eventually come to your website, give you a call, do a consultation and all that good stuff, right? That's really the goal. The goal is to get people off of those sites, even YouTube to the point to an extent, even Amazon. Amazon, you can keep them on there because that's where people shop, which I'll get to. And that was the thing about that. You know, is this? Am I in focus? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I'm in focus on the main camera. I probably have to use this one that looks like I'm in focus. <laughs> but that's the thing about this. That's more so the things that we're trying to do. We're trying to eventually get people to come to our website to to enjoy our product on there. And to not so much heavily depend on the farmer's market or that marketplace. So then you start to peep game. You start to understand people a little bit more. You're like, okay, this is a person that I see almost every week. They come here to get a cup of coffee or to even talk to me. We talk about life. We talk about this. We talk about that. Sometimes they'll buy a cup of coffee. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll buy it for a friend or a bag of coffee. But it's... It's kind of sort of a relationship that you're trying to build, just like this whole YouTube thing. It's like, it's about relationships. It, that takes time. It's, it's about building, right? All that stuff takes time, right? So, then you start to realize, and the money started going down because people stopped caring about farmer's markets. And then it started getting to the summertime and summer in Houston, Missouri city is pretty hot. <laughs> so people barely came out. It was buggy. It was just nasty. And people always gripe about rain. I love rain. 
But, oh, rain is nasty. It's disgusting. Whatever. That's my soapbox for another day. I may try to incorporate how I love rain and how it relates to coffee. <laughs> so, so then you start to understand and peep game and understand people, right? And then we had a couple of people that just really loved our stuff, but they will only get it at the farmer's market. Information on the bag. It's like a advertised business card on it. And then no matter what you told people, you told them that you could deliver it to them. You told them that, you know, that they can go on a website and order and all that stuff. They wouldn't do it. So you're like, damn, it's hard to get people to kind of take the next step. You know, we've already developed, built this trust, right? And then you're like, okay. And it was getting towards the end of the season. My dad was having more issues and just going back and forth, dealing with that, helping him out and just really trying to be in a place to where it made sense. And then it got to the point to where it passed and then we almost finished out the season. And then they were like, "Okay, we're going to move to this location. We'll give you first dibs. I think there's another coffee purveyor that wants to do it, too. And then we decided. We're like thinking about it. It's like, okay. I am here every day. Not every day, but I'm here on Saturday. Okay. For six, seven hours. And then what I do the day before and all that stuff. And I have one day to just chill on the weekend, right? And I think we made probably a hundred bucks, sometimes 200 bucks good weekend was 300 bucks but that was more so in the beginning and yeah what if we just stayed home and not do anything we won't make any money but we won't really lose any money because of the time and the effort and the dedication that we had to put into it So then we start thinking more logically because we try to bring people with us and that didn't really work, right? And then here's the kicker about the farmer's market. A lot of times when you are at the farmer's market and doing your things and trying to understand your different vendors, their stories, and how many other farmer's markets that they go to, is that you really try to, you really understand even more so of like, okay, What's going on here? This person's going to this vendor. They probably have a crew and all this stuff. So it's like a carny. It's like a carnival. It's like a. <sighs> it's like a traveling like circus. That's what it seems like. Like you have these random people, this butterfly person or this plant lady or, and they have different people, bread people. Some with companies. Some with not companies. Some with chips and honey and all that stuff and vegetables that they get from a local (laughs) non-organic spot they tell you it's organic and all that good stuff and get beef and meat and all that stuff and chicken and whatever right all that good stuff so and then you realize that You know, you're sizing up this person. You're like, okay, cool. This person's a cake guy. We're like right next to each other. It actually works. Get your coffee, get your cake. You know, complimentary. You don't want to be next to the tea guy. The tea guy and coffee guy, they're right right next to each other. They're competing with each other. Right? And then you're like, wait. I'm not thinking about this correctly. I'm thinking about these vendors like these vendors are like my competition or they're my friends and stuff. But these vendors are just my competition. And it doesn't really matter if it's a tea guy. Or or a, or a vegetable person or meat person, it doesn't it doesn't really fucking matter. We're all competing for the sack St. dollar. So that person who came to the farmer's market. 
has twenty dollars. Depending on the area, let's just say they got sixty dollars cash. But you know, everybody got their carts, readers, and stuff. But still, they came to the farmers market. They wanted something unique, authentic that they can probably make a dish with that night or later in the night. Because they're still going to the grocery store to get majority of their stuff. They think they're doing something unique. They're helping out the fellow man and all that stuff, right? But here's the kicker about all this stuff is that once you really start to realize, like, look at this table right here. This is a perfect example of this cable. You see it in the main camera, but you can't really see it in the other one. Is that this table represents the farmer's market. I didn't do this on purpose. This table is going to be a staple in this, but this exactly is what's going on. So you have an entrance, right? You have one entrance. Somebody's coming in. And as they're coming in, you're like, okay. Somebody's in the front. Eventually, they'll make their way around. And that person, just think of that one person as many people, right? That one person comes in. And just let's just say the natural flow of things is that they just make a either a circle around to one side or to the other side, right? Okay. And as they do that, especially if they have farmer's market that just only have one entrance, if they have multiple ones, then you might more so a little bit lucky or better off than that, right? But here's the thing. Somebody's making their rounds. And yeah, people smiling. Hopefully that you'll go to their booth. And then you say, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Some candy or some kids selling some cotton candy or some shit like that, right? That's $5. No, it's not five dollars because it's farmers markets. You know, you gotta pay for that booth. I ain't talking about that. You gotta pay every 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 month for that booth fee, right? You gotta pay just like the barber shop or anywhere else. Real estate, it's real estate. That's why organizers love it because it's it's a perfect real estate game. I was about to say scheme, but it kind of is a scheme. But it makes sense. Why would you not pay for your spot? And there's different spots within the whole farmer's market that are actually worth more. And actually where you want to be is more in the front. Okay. So when you're in the front of the farmer's market, you get most of the people that come in. So majority of the time, you're going to get those people who just started their giving away journey. <laughs> so they give that kid that's in the Boy Scout Eight dollars for his cotton candy, and they said, "Fuck it, I'll just tip him two dollars." It's ten. And then they go around. Oh, this one looks interesting. Another ten dollars. Oh, this one too. That's another ten, fifteen dollars. And then they're like, "Okay, I'm about to spend a hundred dollars in the farmers market, and none of the stuff I can really make a meal out of, right?" <laughs> So then they get to you. The farmer's market starts at nine, which you think that's more of a benefit. But truthfully, you want the farmer's market to start as early as possible for a coffee purveyor. Because that's when people mostly drink coffee. A lot of times what we were getting was people were coming in there like, oh. I already have my cup of coffee. I'm good. So now you're. And the back foot of trying to really figure out the things that you're trying to do and trying to sell your product, get your product out, out there. You've already developed all the cool people and community and all that stuff. You've done all that, right? You're trying to sell your stuff. And where I was, where we were, we were like more towards the middle. So by that time, that person's already spent their $50. So they're just making their nice they're making nices or whatever it's called, you know, around the rest of the uh, farmer's market. They may pick up another card from somebody who's doing some type of business. That seems kind of weird, but weird being at a farmer's market. And yeah, so they go around and then you start to realize is that you're competing with that person's. Let's just say easy number, $50. That's all they brought for the farmer's market. They got more money, but it's farmer's market. Let's, I can't take that seriously. That's the farmer's market. 
That's for fun. And I'm giving this to a person who's going to help them. And I think it's going to help them, but it's really going to help them pay their boofies before they actually make money. And then you realize you're in competition with everybody, not just the tea guy, not just the guy that you think compliments your coffee well, the the donut guy or the cupcake guy or whatnot, whatever. You're in competition with everybody because that person or that family only has a set amount of money for the farmer's market. And depending on where you're at within the whole scheme of the farmer's market, that's where you're at. And I was like, I don't want to play this game. Why am I playing a game that I'm losing in? That it's not that beneficial. All this effort is put into it. So a lot of times when people come to me and they tell me, oh, you should go to farmer's market. I politely smile and do this. I tell them, no, that's cool. Because I actually know the amount of work that's actually involved in this whole farmer's market thing. And that's the thing that people don't realize that, you know, you won't really understand things until you really get into it. And that's the beauty of it thing. I think that's the beauty of of all this. I talked to another friend. I'll get off soon because it's 50 minutes. This is bizarre that I'm still talking for 50 minutes, which, again, uh, I the first couple of podcasts were like five minutes. Um, I was talking to a friend earlier in the week and he was talking about, let me drink this coffee because I haven't drunk it. So talking about YouTube. I'm talking about this and that, about YouTube and it's cool, blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about things he likes to do and education and because that would make the most money. And I was like, go ahead and do it. Do it. Do what you want to. None of that stuff matters. Until you get into the ring and to figure it out, you realize that, wow, this is a lot harder than it really is. You don't know that until you get into the game. So you got to get into the game, just like with anything and everything. And that's where you will learn and that's where you will get better. And that's where you will change things, modify things in order for it to meet the criteria, meet the uh, the image, the value that you want to give to people. So that's that's more so what I got. I don't want to continue to talk more about this. I may talk about it differently in the next couple of months or a year from now. But that's my why I don't do farmers markets anymore spill. And why using farmers market as an analogy, why it's extremely helpful and beneficial into a lot of things that I do, what I want to pay, pay more attention to. And I think that's the biggest kicker in all this is that we are in a place of understanding, of wonder, of trying to get better. But we can take so many different lessons of things that we've already done into other things. It's just the same thing why I don't really care so much about Instagram. It's kind of like a farmer market type of schemey type of thing. And there's so much effort involved into it, at least to me, that. I don't want to play that game. I'm taking my tools, taking my taking my dirt and playing somewhere else, playing a different game. And I do like YouTube. I love YouTube. I love podcasting. I love blogging. I love writing. I love really eventually getting out there and talking to people. You know, I will talk more to people. I will express myself to them and understand that I'm really just trying to understand them. We are going to get to the point to where we understand each other. And then, yeah, eventually I know I'll make a dollar or two, which would be awesome, right? I'm not going to lie. It'd be awesome. But it's really more so about connecting to people. So that's what I want to do. So like I said, this one says, I don't know what this one says. It's still recording. This one's recording too. It's 50 minutes. This thing's going to cut me off because I don't got the premium one on it. So. That's it, guys. So 
that's podcast out Sunday. This is a this one was a beast. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not blowing out too much. I can recover it in the main camera because I'm backlit and I'm more of a shadow. <laughs>